Welcome to Count With Me. I'm Robin, and we are counting the Omer together. This is our gift package of letters. Let's see what the letter is for today. Today is the 10th day in our count. And today we have the letter Tav. It's the last letter in the Hebrew Aleph Beit. It's the, it's the end the last one, but we find it today in the midst of the Shema, in the word Malchuto. Yesterday we studied the Vav with the Halam on the top, and kingship, crownship, and the kingdom. That's the, the focus of this word Malchuto. But let's just look for a minute at this one letter for today. This letter, hidden in plain sight, is composed of two other letters. It's composed of a Dalit and a Noon. Isn't that interesting? That's something I learned. I'm sharing what I'm learning on the counting of the Omer this year. This is the first time, the first year that I have done this as a focus. Focusing on each one of the 49 letters of the Shema, we are building the edifice, the building of the Shema, from the last letter all the way up to the beginning. In the letter Tav, we have the Dalit. This one is not a perfect Dalit, but imagine a Dalit which looks like this. And then we have the Nun, the letter Nun, which is actually this letter. And if we put them together, we can kind of come up with that. I didn't do a real great PowerPoint for you today, so you're going to have to use your imagination. But you can. You can see that that is a letter Tav. Now, the letter Tav means a mark. It's interesting, though, when we consider that this mark has these other two letters. Um, the mark includes the Dalit, which is a door, and the letter Nun, which is the numerical value of 50. Now, we are counting 49 days to the 50th day. So this is pretty significant because this letter Tav is the doorway to the 50. It's the doorway to the ultimate light, which is a numerical value of 50, but it's a mark. So all together, we have a doorway to the light of 50, but it takes a mark of God to get there. Now, what does Dalit and Noon uh, spell? It spells, let me see if I can get it in the right order for you. It spells Don. The Noon would be elongated to its final form. But Don, the tribe of Don, is the tribe of judgment. And God and his kingdom is a kingdom of judgment and a kingdom that is a kingdom of light. And it's a kingdom that is a kingdom that separates between light and dark. And in order to be a part of this kingdom of God, we need to have the mark of God put upon us. The scripture that I wanted to that I want to bring to us today as our focus and as our thought for today is found in the book of 2 Corinthians. Paul is writing to the church, to the called out group, to the called out ones, to the ecclesia in Corinth. And beginning in the 18th verse, he says, But as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. In other words, it's not a mixture. It's not um, an admixture. When, when Adam and Chava fell in the Garden of Eden, in Gan Eden, good and evil became mixed up. Prior to that, prior to the fall, good and evil were very clearly demarked. But once the fall occurred, good and evil became mixed together. There became an admixture. It's much like our culture today. We live in an admixture of good and evil, and it is the job and the purpose of the righteous person 
to draw out holiness from that admixture and to separate. It's a constant process of, in Hebrew it's called bitul, of separation, of pulling out holiness out of the profane. For the, verse 19, for the Son of God, Yeshua HaMashiach, in other words, the emanation of God, the, the one that came out of godliness, the Messiah, the word that came forth, who was preached among you by me and Silas and Timothy was not yes and no, but in him it has always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Messiah. And so through him, the Amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. So in other words, those of us who are in Messiah, those of us who are the emanation of godliness in the earth, those of us who are the emanation of the Mashiach, of the Messiah, who have the anointing and the mark of the Messiah on us, we say, Amen. We say, faithful. We say, Emunah. We say, faithfulness to all of the promises of God that are contained in the Torah that are contained in the prophets, that are contained in the writings, because that is what Messiah came to do. He came not to destroy the, the Torah, but he came to fill it full and to be the mark or the goal of the Torah. Now in verse 21, now it is God who makes us, I'm sorry, now it is God who makes both us and you Stand firm in Christ. Now, what does this uh, what does this tav do? It stands firmly on two feet. It is a letter of truth, and it is a letter of um, completion because it is the end of the aleph bait. Now, it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in the Messiah. He anointed us, he moshiached us, he put his holy oil upon us, set his seal, his mark of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. Now what are we doing? What is coming? The great day of the revelation of the Torah and the revelation of the Ruach HaKodesh on Shavuot in the book of Acts is coming. We are counting, we are counting toward that day, and we are making space for it. We have the black letters, but don't forget we have the white space that surrounds these black letters. We have the spirit that is the, uh, the oomph, the glory, the power in us to tell forth the truth of scripture and to say yes and amen to the promises, all of the promises of God in the Messiah. Another scripture that I want to close with for this meditation for you and for me, these are for me today, uh, is the um, book of the Song of Songs. And it is uh, traditional to, in tradition we are told that the Song of Songs was what was sung over uh, the family of Israel, over Israel, as they stood at Mount Sinai and said, we will do and we will hear. In other words, we accept this covenant. And there were those who were standing there uh, from future generations. There were souls that were there that also said, yes, I accept this covenant. And in verse 6 of the 8th chapter of this beautiful song between uh, Ani Lidodi Vidodi Li, I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine, between the beloved and the beloved, here we have verse 6, place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal over your arm, for love is as strong as death, it's jealousy unyielding as the grave. The beloved one is asking that God would set 
the beloved as a seal over the heart. Remember the one the high priest went in to the Holy of Holies, uh, to the holy place and ministered that the high priest wore the seal of the, of the tribes of Israel over the heart. Remember that when the, the um, tefillin is wrapped, it is wrapped around the arm and it is a reminder of God being in our hand and on our heart. Always there is a physical reminder of the spiritual. And this message today is a powerful message for me to remember that we are sealed in him, that we are placed as a down payment, as an earnest on our inheritance. We're, we're the earnest money. We're the earnest for the fullness of the power and the glory that is coming into the earth. Even now, for the whole earth groans for the manifestation of the sons of God in the earth, even now, so that as this earth is transformed and comes to its fullness, that the full revelation of the full messianic process will be revealed. May it be soon, may it be speedily in our days. Amen. And may you be blessed as you count the Omer. Thank you for counting with me.